Welcome back everyone. Today I'll be talking about how baseball can grow around the world, specifically in places where the sport is hardly known. This topic was suggested in the comments of my last video. If any of you out there have any ideas for my future videos, feel free to suggest it in the comments. I'm always looking for new ideas. Let's start today by looking at South America. Of course, baseball is already the top sport in Venezuela, so it doesn't need any further promotion there. Also, baseball is a strong second in Colombia behind soccer. In fact, Colombia's professional winter league has expanded southward recently. Until now, baseball had been largely confined to the Caribbean coast, but now it's becoming more of a nationwide sport. But unfortunately, baseball's southward expansion stopped with these two countries, and the sport has been mostly unknown in non-Caribbean South America. The best place to try and gain a strong following for baseball would be the big country, Brazil. Just 10 years ago, baseball there was mostly known as a sport for the Japanese-Brazilian community. Gains were made in promoting youth baseball, but most young athletes abandoned the sport as soon as they got older. But in the last decade, five Brazilian-born players have played in MLB, including Washington Nationals catcher Jan Gomes, who's having an excellent career. Young Brazilian baseball players hear about these homegrown stars going to North America and playing at the top level in front of huge crowds, making millions of dollars. This will make them less likely to give up the sport as they enter their teen years. So, this would be the perfect time to start a professional baseball league, preferably a winter league, which would be in their summer. Brazilian ball players currently in the minor leagues could spend their winters there. Fans can watch them on the field in little ballparks around the country. A year or two later, see them on TV or on the internet, playing in front of big North American crowds. The league could strive to one day join the Caribbean series. In fact, if other South American countries follow suit, they might create their own B-League Caribbean series with a system of promotion and relegation to the top level of competition. And yes, the name Caribbean series would no longer make any sense. But just like the World Series, nobody really cares. It would also be good to educate people there about the Caribbean series, so they know how special an event it is that their team is trying to qualify for. Also, educate them about the World Series, so they know the importance of the event their players are trying to get into. And like I said before, gains have already been made in youth baseball with participation numbers going up annually in countries all over South America, so the wheels are already in motion. But a professional league in the big country would be the ultimate step. In Africa, the only success stories we hear come from South Africa. We've seen them compete in the WBC in past years. The first player from the African continent to reach the big leagues came from South Africa and made his debut a couple years ago. Last summer, another South African made his debut in MLB. The rest of the continent, however, is way behind. At the 2019 African Championship, South Africa beat Uganda 27 to nothing in the finals. That wasn't a fluke either. That's pretty typical. Baseball organizations have been spending money in Africa trying to bring the game to as many countries as possible, improve the quality of equipment used, and better develop the players so that one day, some country can beat South Africa. If baseball grows in South Africa, that's great. Maybe they can start up their own professional league someday. But baseball will never be a big sport there. As a Commonwealth country, they already have their big three sports. And as the reigning Rugby World Cup champions, they're not exactly hungry for a new sport to play and watch. The same can be said for neighboring Namibia, formerly a part of South Africa. If baseball is going to take off in Africa, it'll have to come from another country. They've done a good job of introducing the sport to so many different countries on the continent. Now it's time to step up the game and determine which two countries are the best candidates for a baseball explosion. Give them more equipment, create more youth league teams, bring in professional players from abroad to help in developing players. Ideally, these would be two countries from the same region that could build up a rivalry with each other. And countries that, unlike South Africa, don't already have a big name for themselves in the sports world, where sending a player to MLB or qualifying for the WBC can excite an entire nation. So where are these two countries? I don't have the answer to that. Baseball is in the very early stages of growth in Africa. But in a land with 53 countries, finding two that will embrace the game is entirely possible. Europe. A lot of effort has gone into trying to make the game more popular there. MLB's recent attempt to gain spectators by giving London a Yankees Red Sox series in the middle of the season is the most obvious. But for a long time now, baseball organizations have been working hard to get young players involved in the game. Participation numbers are up in almost every country, so that's a positive sign. But what they really need is a star player from each country. I mean a ball player born and raised in that country, not one who moved to America at a young age. Europeans want to root for someone from their own country, and not a bench warmer, a star player. Like former NBA stars Tony Parker of France or Dirk Nowitzki of Germany. They were great basketball players. People in the countries turned on their TV specifically to watch those guys play. Young athletes wanted to be just like them, wore jerseys with their names on the back, joined basketball leagues, and tried to emulate their style of play. 
Baseball can have the same thing, but it's not an easy task. They won't be able to get the best athletes because Europe, throughout the continent, is a crowded sports market. The best thing baseball organizations can do is seek out the ones with natural playing ability at a very young age, convince them that baseball is the way to go, and try to mold them into superstars. Easier said than done, of course, but if they can succeed with this in just one country, it would be a huge step for baseball in Europe. There is baseball in the Middle East, but not in every country. Those places where it does exist, Iran, Iraq, Dubai, it's still in the very early stages of development, just as in Africa. So, they need to continue with development, better equipment, more youth leagues, and expand on the existing ones. One thing that would probably help to grow the game in this region is to de-emphasize the American connection to the game. Baseball's branding as the great American pastime has helped it in some areas of the world, but hurt it in others. You'll hear more about that in the next part of the world I cover in this video. People in the Middle East don't avoid sports simply for being American, so baseball doesn't have to hide its origins. But it would be better to market the sport as an international sport, played in many countries that just happen to have started in the USA. China. This is where baseball being identified as the American pastime had its consequences. Baseball was banned in China under Mao's rule. The reason given that baseball was too American, whereas basketball was allowed because it was more of an international sport. Actually, it wasn't at the time, but baseball was without a doubt America's top sport, and people around the world often looked at it as the American game. It also didn't help that baseball was the national pastime for Japan, a country that China has had an historically bad relationship with, and that continues today. South Korea, on the other hand, has an on-again, off-again relationship with China, and right now it's somewhat positive. The Chinese are big fans of Korean pop culture. Baseball scenes show up occasionally in Korean dramas and K-pop music videos. This is not enough to motivate the Chinese to build fields, buy the equipment, and start organizing teams. What would get them really excited about baseball on their own soil would be KBO expansion onto the Chinese mainland. Korea is maxed out on professional baseball teams now with 10 ball clubs in a country of 50 million. If they want to expand any further, they'll have to go beyond their borders. If they start two expansion teams in China, this would give the league 12 teams, so they'd probably have to split the league into two divisions. Presently, there are no divisions and have one Chinese team in each division. Bring in celebrities from Korea to throw out the first pitch, perform between innings, sign autographs, etc. Make it a whole Korean pop culture event with baseball as the main attraction. One potential roadblock here would be the Chinese government. I'm not even sure if they'd allow the KBO to expand into China. And if they did, there's always a chance of the teams not being able to play when tensions rise between the governments of the two countries. This expansion would require a commitment from KBO. I've said in the past that KBO, just like NPB in Japan, doesn't think much outside of its own borders, so I always thought this idea was not likely to happen. However, while I was putting this video together, I came across an article. The first ever professional baseball league in Laos has just gotten underway, and the country's first baseball stadium opens this month. All this was accomplished with help from the Koreans. Former KBO MVP Lee Man Su set up a foundation to support baseball in Laos and donated over $8,000 worth of equipment. Kwon Yong Jin, a former high school coach in Korea, is manager of the Laos national baseball team. So, this wasn't done by KBO specifically, but it was an action taken by members of the Korean baseball community to spread the game to other parts of Asia. And, that brings me to the next region I want to talk about, Southeast Asia. I never imagined Laos starting up a professional league. That was a surprise. I think a better place in that region would be Thailand or Vietnam. I'll focus on Thailand here since I'm more familiar with that country. This would take some effort from the Japanese and require some new facilities for baseball in Thailand. New ballparks would best be built on the outskirts of the Bangkok area, where there's space to build and where they can draw from the population in the city. There are actually a lot of Japanese people living in Bangkok, since a lot of Japanese companies have factories there. And there are plenty of Bangkok residents who have spent some time in Japan. Most of them go to Japan on student visas or temporary working visas and spend a few years there. They can often be seen at games in Japan rooting for their favorite teams. But once they get back home, that interest becomes just a memory. Two things the Japanese can do here. One is to donate money for new facilities and equipment. Two is to send out professional players to develop the young athletes. At the same time, they should try to advertise their own league, build up a fan base with a goal of holding preseason games for NPB in Bangkok in the future. Thailand is very welcoming of foreign professional sports leagues holding events on their soil. For example, Japan's Super GT Racing Series holds a race in Thailand every year, drawing thousands of spectators. One major obstacle baseball would face in Thailand and all of Southeast Asia would be the rainy season. During the summer it rains almost every day, either a light steady rain lasting all day 
or a sudden unexpected downpour on an otherwise sunny day. Baseball would have to be primarily a winter sport there. South Asia is the last region I'll talk about. Like South Africa, these are Commonwealth countries. What makes it harder for baseball in this region is that they're almost exclusively fans of the other bat and ball sport, cricket. Throughout these two sports histories, in every part of the world, they just can't seem to coexist. The one exception is Australia. Cricket is their preferred sport, but baseball has a long history there. Cricketers, in their youth, have often played baseball during cricket's off-season. Ian Chappell, Australia's cricket captain from 1971 to 75, has said that playing catcher in baseball in his youth helped him in cricket. I don't see any reason why this can't happen elsewhere. For too long, baseball and cricket have looked at each other as enemies, when they should be existing side by side. You have to wonder, in India, a country with over a billion people, where cricket dominates, how many boys have tried out for their cricket team but failed because their natural swinging and throwing abilities were better suited for baseball? So baseball would do best by taking a sort of secondary role, like second choice after cricket. Not exactly how baseball would prefer to market itself, but with over a billion people you don't need to be the biggest sports to attract thousands of players and fans. And with India's economy developing quickly, now is the time to move in. We've seen it with so many other countries. As they get richer, they become more willing to break from traditional sports and try out new ones. And the event that can bring all these countries together is the World Baseball Classic. If all the things I've talked about in this video were to happen today, the next WBC would be huge. But the game needs to grow more before the WBC can be the big event everyone wants it to be. And there's a lot that WBC could do differently. But that's a topic that would require a whole other video. This one is over. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.